Briefly, before I get this video started, I have two disclaimers. The first one, this is going to be a longer video, so grab your snacks, popcorn, your barbecue, your, your dinner, late lunch, whatever it is, grab that. And then the second disclaimer, I'm no stock expert, no financial expert, so don't go and buy or sell or trade any of your stock based on my opinion. So let's get started with the video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. This article comes to you guys from the Market Watch. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So T-Mobile hits a big milestone for the company. As of May 30th, T-Mobile was knocking on the door of the 200 billion market cap. They have since went over the 200 billion. They had a, I think it was Friday. Yeah, I think it was on Friday. The stock popped again. It reached up to a price target of like 174, 173, and that allowed it to cross over 200 billion. So big milestone. Congratulations to the company. They've came a long way from where they started to where they are now. I mean, a totally different company. Now we got to get into the... Uh, the, the discussion behind, you know, what got them here to this point. And T-Mobile has to be careful moving forward that they don't derail their own success. And what I mean by that is the, the recent price increase. Can T-Mobile increase prices even further? And it, does, it doesn't just have to come from directly increasing the voice lines, but if you add on the SpaceX Starlink feature or add-on as you know with a price that's an additional price increase for the users that are on the older or the lower end plans if T-Mobile is planning to only offer this to the five, Go 5G plus 5G next and then the Magenta Max customer for included in the plan then everyone else that's below those plans which is a lot of people will have to pay, I don't know if it's going to be a monthly add-on, a day pass, whatever it is, people will have to pay more. Now, that is not public, that is not officially announced. I'm just putting that out there that it is a possibility based on what I've recently seen from users sending in that their plans are apparently not qualified, so they may have to pay. So I'm just putting out that possibility that here in the short term, even though it's not a just a straight up price increase on the plans, you could be paying for this add on if you are not on the Magenta Max Go 5G Plus or Go 5G Next. So that's a very, very strong possibility. So like I said, T-Mobile has to be very careful because their perception is still not right there with the competition as it comes to the network size and scale. Also, with the uh, SpaceX Starlink situation, direct to satellite for the cell phones, I also want to temper expectations. And I wanted to elaborate a bit on that in this video. I think there are some people out there, and I think that's the reason the stock popped as well, because there was an official announcement that from apparently from SpaceX themselves that they are planning to launch this in early fall. Although... T-Mobile did not cooperate that. They did not come out with a press release of their own. SpaceX says they are ready to launch this in the early fall. What I think some are, again, misunderstanding, and I went back and I watched the original presentation of the announcement between SpaceX and, and, and T-Mobile and the whole Elon thing. I think people need to really temper their expectations. I think some people are expecting this to fill coverage gaps if there are any amongst like the bigger interstates and the, the even some of the smaller highways that are traveled frequently. And I don't think that's the case. I think this is really specifically meant for only off the grid situations. The Everglades, the, the Rocky Mountains, the, the very, very, very super, super rural populated area that's less populated than anywhere else where the satellites can actually handle it. If you have, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred cars crossing into a highway, even if it's a smaller back road highway, 
you're going to have to put up a macro. A satellite is not going to work for that scenario. It's just not. If you guys remember, and that's why I rewatched the first commercial launch, Elon stated it would take 30 minutes to send a text and receive a text. How is that going to work on a populated area? Even somewhat populated, like, like I said, five, six, seven hundred cars. I mean, by the time you go through that, um, that coverage gap, right? If you let's let's just say you do connect to the satellite and you send that text, by the time the text is sent and received, you're back on the native uh, tower network. It just doesn't make any sense to connect people in those areas. That's where T-Mobile will have to just suck it up and build out more towers. See, the satellites are not enough to cover heavily uh, streamed areas. It's just not going to work. If you're streaming music, videos, texting, calling, the satellite cannot handle that. If you're Even if you're remotely close, let's just say you're remotely close to an urban area, a city, mid-sized city area, and you're on a military base that's out somewhere in the desert, if it's close to living populated areas, they're going to have to get a tower closer to those areas. Some of the, even the smaller areas that are for training, they can house three, four, five thousand soldiers. A satellite can't handle that much traffic. It's just not what it's meant for. Elon made that very clear. He said maybe at best, you know, a few hundred people on a satellite. And that might be able to do one to two megabits. If you overload the satellite, your phone's going to turn into a paperweight anyway. So you might as well leave it at no service until you can get a cell site to that area. So like I said, it, it's, it's really meant for the off the grid areas, like very, 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 very lightly traveled areas where the return on investment doesn't make any sense. And that's why T-Mobile is using its PCS, the G-Block. That's, that's extra spectrum they have sitting around. They could have used it for their terrestrial network, but they decided to give that G-Block to, to Elon. Now, you notice T-Mobile is not using any of their low band, their prime spectrum. They're not using any 2.5. They're keeping that on the cell grid. They don't want to lessen the experience on the tower sites for the satellite the satellite is 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 a fill-in it, it helps in the super mountainous areas if you're lost somewhere it helps but they don't want to jeopardize the performance of their regular network the tower network to boost the performance of the satellite it's just it just doesn't make sense if you think about it right if you think about it from a scientific standpoint it doesn't make sense why would you take a chunk of your existing spectrum that you know is highly utilized and give that to the satellite provider. Just doesn't make sense. So that's why I wanted to temper your expectation because I don't want you guys to expect, oh yeah, let me add this on my plan. And then I know there's a coverage gap from, you know, Interstate 10 to Interstate 20. This is going to cover that. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And even if it does, it's going to be the most worst experience you, you'll ever have you're going to be at over a thousand millisecond latency the speeds are going to be well below i mean they're going to be in the kilobits it's it's going to be horrible the experience you're going to be constantly buffer loading and 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 trying to load any content that you are trying to upload or send or whatever by the time that possibly gets through you're already going to be past that gap and back onto the native towers so again, like I said, temper your expectations. This is really just for the campsite where you're traveling in the middle of a national park for the Everglades, the, the Rocky Mountains, the, the very, very, very rural population that has maybe 80 people there. That's what that satellite service is meant for. You're not going to go from San Antonio to Austin, and if there's a coverage gap on any of those back roads, you're not going to get coverage filled in with this satellite. It just, it just can't handle it. It's just no way 
that you're going to be able to successfully place a call or send a text in a meaningful time if you are in an event of an emergency. So for that, T-Mobile is just going to have to build more sites. And that leads me to my next point, the, the higher pricing, right? We, we touched on that earlier in the video. The higher pricing, they're walking a very, very, very thin line here. They're still trying to increase pricing while still trying to say we're cheaper than the competition, right? So people are going to start questioning, well, what is it? Are you going to raise my price or are you going to try to be the cheapest in the, in the, in the industry, right? So amongst the MNOs, you might still be able to make the argument that T-Mobile is cheaper. A lot of these legacy plans that receive the $5 increase, they're still not as expensive as Verizon and even AT&T. But if T-Mobile, like I said, once they start adding in the, the fee for the satellite, if, if you choose to pay for that, I, I, I'm not going to do it. Why would I? You know, if it's included, that's fine. I'll take it. But the chances of me connecting to that are slim to none. You know, they, they've built, uh, T-Mobile has built out extensive macros now in the area and, and most of the stuff is covered now. There might be a slim chance from here, I think it's on Highway 60 through uh, Carlsbad, that, that, that there is a coverage gap, a, a large one, quite large, that they might allow that to connect. But I don't know if that's going to be of any great significant performance to where you could comfortably say, yes, this coverage gap is filled. So you might have bars and you might have a signal, but nothing will work. So that would be the only scenario where I could think of like, yes, this is this is where this service would make sense. And then we still have to test it out commercially, right? How does how can how quickly does it connect? All that good stuff still has to be tested. So that's a more of a wait and see approach. But yes, that that could be another price increase. So even if it's ten dollars a month as an add on, that's still ten dollars more that you have to pay. So now you know, you're inching closer and closer and closer to the competition, right? And at some point, you, you're going to question like, okay, which, you know, what, might as well just go to Verizon at this point. If I'm with T-Mobile for the cheaper price and I left Verizon due to the higher price, but Verizon had a better network, I mean, a lot of people are going to start questioning, I might as well just go back to Verizon. So... T-Mobile is, like I said, T-Mobile is walking a very thin line here. They need to be very careful on how they approach this moving forward. And again, we will get an update on everything in early October. They said early fall. The, the date of the capital markets day for T Deutsche Telekom is already listed. I posted it on X. I think it's October 2nd is when that takes place. Fall starts September 22nd. They're going to present in early October their next five-year plan on everything. Like they'll, they'll give us insight on what they, what they think they can do with U.S. Cellular, where they will be with the fiber situation, the satellite, where the, where the overall wireless uh, customer will be in the next five years, more of the C-band and DOD networking stuff. So all of that will be guided and discussed in early October. But... Again, T-Mobile has to be careful. And then us as consumers, we have to look at it objectively. And that's where I have to come in and I have to temper your guys' expectations. You got to look at it from both sides. The business agenda always states they got to make money. So if they're starting to spend more, which they are, they clearly are, fiber, satellite, more towers, U.S. Cellular, they just bought. That's going to increase the, the operations cost. So they got to cover that with these price increases while they still grow the business overall. So that's kind of helping 50-50. Verizon, on the other hand, they're not really growing much organically. So they have to rely 100% of the price increase to help boost their financials. T-Mobile can still kind of balance that 50-50 and AT&T as well. AT&T has increased pricing some, but they've also grown. And they continue to grow in fiber too. So that helps AT&T. And in the same way that helps T-Mobile growing 50, you know, organically and then with the price. And they just recently pulled the pricing lever. So that's just recent for T-Mobile where they actually went and increased the plan pricing. So it's going to be an interesting ride. Come October, 
I will be very, I will be very paying, paying very close attention as to what they announce and what they discuss, because that's going to give us a huge outlook for how the rest of this decade will go with T-Mobile. I still think they have their eyes set on becoming the number one carrier in the United States at the current growth trajectory and everything. I think that's, I mean, I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, but if they continue to grow postpaid numbers at 5 million plus every year, they will eventually pass Verizon. I mean, they're at 120 now. At the end of the year, they'll be at 123, 124 million. End of next year, 130. I mean, they, they'll just keep going higher and higher. And if there isn't a serious competitive threat, then regardless of the perception, they have the consumer duped enough to where they're willing to try T-Mobile at a bit of a lesser price versus the competition, you know, with the third line free and all that for, you know, for the for the best 5G network. That's what T-Mobile is putting out in their messaging. Even if it's a lesser experience versus the competition, they're still, you know, duped enough to try it out. And 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 this whole model and concept is clearly working for T-Mobile. Look at the stock price. Look at the market cap. Free cash flows are up. Margins will now significantly increase due to the price increase. And they're going to add more features and add-ons. That's what they already discussed. That's why you have to pay very close attention to what they discussed at these quarterly earnings. They're, they're telling you what they're doing indirectly, but they're telling you what, they, what they're doing. Like my cat said in one of the quarterly earnings, we're going to try to figure out how to deepen relationships on home internet. So that's probably going to be home security systems that they're going to do as an add-on. That, that, yes, you guessed it. It'll come with a cost. They're going to do some type of ring doorbell. They're going to try and do TV in some way, shape, or form again. I don't think it'll be another T-Vision, but it might be a discount or, or, or something along those lines like they did with YouTube TV. They're going to try to bundle the customer in to deepen that relationship. So that's coming as well. They haven't even discussed that yet and, and really told us publicly how they're going to do that, how, how the home internet is going to evolve, evolve to deepen the relationship. They haven't discussed any of that. So maybe we get a glimpse of that in October when they present their, their next five years of a plan. But today that remains to be seen. We can speculate, but what we do know, it's going to lead to more money coming out of pockets of consumers. Now, that's all a choice. If it's an add-on and a feature, it's a choice. You you don't have to choose that option. But if you start comparing and it becomes compelling to where you're like, hey, I have the security uh, cameras with Vivint or ADT, it's cheaper with T-Mobile. Let me just go with them. You know, and that's where T-Mobile feels like they wanna they want to move forward in being a competitive company to try and deepen relationships with all products and services. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, big milestone um, that T-Mobile hit, crossing the 200 billion market cap, stock prices up, still popping. Uh, recent announcement of US Cellular is great for, for everyone, you know, evolved. It's, even though if pricing is not, you know, what's favored right now, there's MVNOs out there for US Cellular customers to go to. But for U.S. cellular customers, much larger native footprint. They no longer have to roam or worry about how is their network going to perform perform outside of their footprint. And then T-Mobile customers will have a lar an even larger network from the results of if the merger or the acquisition gets approved. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. If you are new, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.